Hey everyone, it's Saturday. My kids are home. That means we'll probably interrupt, be interrupted in five minutes, but I wanted to finish this painting because it was just bothering me that it was unfinished. So I'm going to spray my palette generously so everything is nice and juicy and I'm going to clean my mixing area from yesterday's painting uh, which was really fun. I was painting in a series so I made this painting this one um, a while ago and I really really liked the colors so I thought okay why do I have to reinvent the wheel every time I might as well do um, another one with these colors and so I made this one with just a little bit different composition and what I'm not exactly sure is how I got to these colors. I'm not sure if I added here uh, buff titanium. I know I had my beloved Lucas Naples yellow, which is looking a bit dry, and maybe it's mixed with some of the dusk green, but I'm not sure. Something here I feel something Something I used. I don't know. I have to look if I filmed uh, doing this. I really should start listing. But uh, I still think they feel like a series. And then I went on and made a bigger one that is actually looking a bit more colorful. I think because of my um, the crayons that I used or the wax pastels, I used a little bit more. But anyway, it's fun. It's, it almost feels like cheating. <laughs> when you're using your, you know, even if it's your own good ideas, it's like we don't always have to suffer <laughs> for everything. <laughs> so this one I painted on camera. It was really fun. I can't remember which colors I used. I definitely see the um, dusk yellow here. I think this looks probably like bloodstone. Is it super critical? Let's pretend it's not, <laughs> because I can't remember. <laughs> I think I used a Carmine. This is a Van Gogh color that I will definitely be repurchasing. I, I wish I could see if the, if the Rembrandt uh, version is the same and if it's like more light fast or something. I'm just trying to see if there's a, a, an advantage of you know, buying the the Van Gogh one. So I hope you're painting along. I hope you're doing well. I tried, this was a bit disappointing. I bought a new um, webcam with the hopes of being able to do live streams. So I bought a webcam that um, has a good uh, quality image and I tested it. And, well, somewhat not surprisingly, the just my internet connection is not good enough. And every time when nothing was moving, <laughs> the image was okay. <laughs> but any time I moved anything, it started to pixelate. Um, I just, the problem is we live in um, kind of a, a little valley. And there's just like forests and really small hills around us. So the internet connection is is just not uh, good enough for live streams. And I think, you know, if, if the quality is not good, if you can't actually see what I'm painting, then, you know, it's as nice as it is to just sit and chat. I mean, maybe we could do that, but, you know, it's just, I don't know. As a, an, a visual artist, I think it's just really, um, it's kind of missing the point if the quality is bad. So that was quite disappointing uh, because it is something that I really wanted to do. So I don't know, uh, ideally I would want to do this from home, but I might, you know, when the virus is under control, if that happens, hopefully that happens soon, I might try and look for a space outside my home where I can do 
like a weekly um, live stream or something like that. The problem also with that is that I'm in Europe and most of the people that watch me are not. <laughs> and <laughs> I am pretty sure that the hours that work best for me, meaning, you know, sunlight, I'm awake and alert and um, at my best are the middle of the night <laughs> for most of you in North America. So uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Um, we'll see. I'm not sure I can make that happen. But yeah, we have YouTube, so we should be happy about that. Okay, so what I'm doing, I'm just trying to add some depth and a bit some like definition. I do want to do like some line work uh, because there is very little detail right now but I think you can see already that just adding those uh, more saturated deeper colors values um, really adds a lot and I also think that things like uh, splatters really add especially if you do them kind of consistently throughout your painting not just at the end like add some splatters but as you're painting it also helps to really build those layers of detail, which, you know, especially if you're, if you paint kind of in my style, which is very loose, very abstract, um, sometimes it seems flat because there's not enough detail. Now, if you try to add a lot more detail, you lose sometimes that like looseness. So it's always a bit of a struggle, but a detail that is so um, like organic and uh, natural and not, you know, organized like splatters really adds. Okay, we definitely need more darker tones here. I, I feel especially like on the edges of the flowers, they just need something darker to really help them pop. So I'm going to go with, I'm pretty sure I used here the um, bloodstone, which is a beautiful color. So I'm just going to, maybe I'll add it with a bit, let's see what happens when I, ooh, that's pretty. When I add it to, to uh, Carmine, see, I, I get this really dark kind of uh, burgundy color, really, really beautiful, like red wine. Let's pretend. Well, I have, I see red wine all the time. I just don't drink it. You know how it looks. <laughs> It's the color of port wine, a reduction, a balsamic reduction. <laughs> you see, I need company. <laughs> so this is also kind of um, brings me back to my whole choosing color, color wheel videos that I have learned that for me, I think it helps, and also the results really um, look kind of more harmonious, is if possible, I really try not to add new colors. And I mean, it's not something I never do, but if I can, for example, with the colors I already have here, I can absolutely get darker values. So this looks a bit like lunar blue this or was it moon glow i don't see any anything else that reminds me of moon glow here maybe it was a touch of lunar blue i don't know it's the problem again i didn't take notes i should really start <laughs> taking notes um yeah so i think it does help with color harmony and i think uh just playing around with the colors that you already have Usually it leads to very exciting discoveries. So let's, for example, take this combination of bloodstone with a little bit of the carmine, all of them colors that I think are already here. <laughs> and we're going to add dusk yellow, which I'm pretty sure is here because that kind of looks like dusk yellow. And now we have, you can always test it. Sometimes it's really a good idea to test. Do you see, it's just like a dark, undefined color but since it's made from colors we use I don't have to worry that it's not it's going to like ruin the harmony or something like that I really like this brush as you can see it kind of 
it has a almost like an irregular edge which you'll never see with um like you know factory made brushes but i think it really adds to you can get really like interesting lines with this so i'm also adding you can see some details some line work it's just very fun it feels very organic to paint with something that looks like this this one is the um wangi uh oh, tracy wrote me how i should pronounce it but i forgot <laughs> wangi <laughs> orange uh, synthetic it's 55 dollars uh, and it's really nice because i mean this is kind of my favorite large brush now but this one is 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 a good uh, middle it still holds a lot of water and so you can cover a lot of space with it but it also um, allows you to paint very easily like finer lines which I like so this is interesting I really like the layering of this new color that I mixed um, because it's just warmer than what I had underneath underneath it was kind of shades of green and this one has a little bit of the carmine warmth in it so I think it definitely uh, gives it that look of I don't know like tree branches here that are more to the front than the stuff that is in the back in general if you look if you observe nature you'll see that things um, in the back for example if you have a row of trees or a row of mountains in the back things are lighter and bluer and you know you, we can use that knowledge even when we're painting something like this and make like the first layer of the background lighter and bluer and then add more intense warmer less blue um, layers on top so it's always like a combination of things that can help you um, add depth to your paintings Uh, hopefully I can put this video up still in December and as far as I know uh, Tracy is continuing his um, code for me so if you want 20% off your brushes this would be a wonderful Christmas present if you're a watercolor artist I I think I can guarantee you will feel <laughs> extra special <laughs> when you paint with them <laughs> what can I tell you um, so yeah, so if you want 20%, uh, use the code IRIT, it's I-R-I-T, it's uh, valid till the end of December, at least, maybe after, we'll see. Okay, so I still feel here, you know, it could go darker. Now, I don't want the flowers to be the same. I really enjoy um, that, vers not versatility, but that variety that not everything looks exactly the same. So with some flowers, I will add more detail or these, I don't know, abstract blooms, I will add more detail. And then um, I won't <laughs> with the other two. So maybe this one will be the most, the most detail and then this one ha will have a little less and then this one even less because right now um, that's the way it is. So I might as well just uh, go with it and I try in every stage of my painting I try to uh, keep that variety so that it's uh, interesting and you know your eye kind of moves around and discovers the details and the differences of every area so I've really been enjoying adding line work not just on the background but also on, I guess, what you could consider the petals of this flower shape. And again, I'm using colors that are already in the painting so that the layers look harmonious. Uh, I like this combination. I think it's pretty, the um, carmine and the bloodstone. I think another interesting combination would be 
the dusk yellow and carmine. Just want to see what happens because they should kind of neutralize each other. Although they're a bit, both a bit on the warm side. So I'll probably get like a brown instead of a gray, but it's still an interesting color. Really pretty. I really have grown to uh, love all these interesting uh, neutrals. And right now I really can't see myself using something like Payne's Gray or something like that. Uh, because I just, I, I feel it'll never be as beautiful as the colors that I can mix. And it's so neutral. I really prefer even my neutrals to have just a little bit more of a tint to them. I think that's the reason that I um, kind of stopped using Lunar Black. I used to use it more. I mean, you could definitely mix um, kind of tinted neutrals, let's call them like that. You could mix them with Lunar Blue, Lunar Black and any of the colors that you use, but I already have those uh, muted neutrals that I love from a tube, like the Zoazite. Yeah, maybe, maybe this was Zoazite. That could be. What's that? I love it when the camera stops me. Okay, so what I do like about filming my process is that I can look at my camera screen and that really gives me a uh, better it's just like standing far from your painting it kind of helps you see the problems and i'm looking at it now and i'm actually really liking what i see i think i could definitely kind of go in and add a bit drama here yeah that definitely adds something and then just maybe a smidgen of this here and the splatter and I really like what I have going here it feels so light and I don't know like just the paint fell on the effortless is the word I'm looking for it looks very effortless I love that in a painting I love that in singing also you know those people that some singers you you hear them straining and their voice and even if their voice is pretty there's just something about people that sing so effortlessly. I think like Elvis is a great example of that, that just seems to be so effortless for him or David Bowie. Okay, so looking at my image, yeah, I definitely want to bring a bit of a pop to the center. Now, I love my uh, Lucas uh, Naples Red, but it is a somewhat muted color. And that's why sometimes at the end, I like to add just a little bit of pop of warmth, like yellow, like you see like the sun touched these. Here I'm going to do it very, very gently and then add some splatters. Um, it just, it has that pop, something like quinacridone gold or which I'm loving right now, or my other <laughs> go-to bright yellow, nickel azo yellow. They just, they can bring that warmth in a way that my Naples yellow red, the Lucas color, which I adore, as I said, it just doesn't have that strength. It's uh, not that transparent. So I think you can see now that this is probably like the last 20% of the work of putting on paint. The process is slower. The paint is more concentrated. Everything is more intentional and the goal is still to kind of keep the freshness here. So I definitely see some blue granulation in the middle. I, I'm just not sure if I used um, Moon Glow or Lunar Blue because here it looks a bit like Lunar Blue. So I'm just going to mix some uh, purple. And for that, I do need something blue. Like the colors that I use till now can't really give me a purple. So this is where I'm thinking, okay, I can justify adding it. Now, here's another thing to pay attention to. Um, 
yellow and purple are complementary colors. And so if you're thinking, okay, which color should I use for the center? And you want your viewer's eye to kind of go to that um, area of your painting, then of course you could choose any dark in your palette, but I say choose a purple because it just vibrates next to the yellow in a way that another dark color will not. So something to uh, keep in mind. And these things are just, you know, it's really helpful when you have to like make these decisions because you kind of, you can do it with more confidence. And, oh, I love my palette right now. It's looking so luscious. And here again, everything I'm doing, I'm, I'm doing in all flowers, but in different, like, doses. So here will be the most um, detailed, here a little bit less, and then here I'll try to really keep it uh, very, very loose. Even this might be a bit much, so I can dab it. Okay, what else? Let's look at the screen. It's looking, it's looking good. I think I could still add even more darkness. So let's go with Zoazite. And another thing, I think if you are introducing new colors, it's a really good idea, especially in areas that are not your um, pop areas or like you know, where you want your viewer's eye to go, but more the areas that are supporting um, roles, uh, to mix that new color with colors that are already uh, in your painting. And so if I add now the Zoazite, it's not going to be, and I, you can see I'm mixing it with, what did I have here? I don't know, all the colors that I used before, dusk yellow, carmine, um, the bloodstone color. I I get just, an interesting neutral and and then gradually I can um, up the dosage of that zoazite but it will still feel harmonious then if I came now with a brand new color and just dabbed it so you need to almost like lay a foundation and now if I wanted the pure version I can dab it in and it'll just kind of blend with the other mixes. Okay, now I feel this is on the verge of overworked, uh, especially with the background. So I think I will leave it for now and then come back and see if there's anything more I want to add. I really like it. There's the lines here I think are interesting and then here you just have the blocks of that darker color and here I can even build up that carmine a bit more and maybe add you can see some of the mix that I have here to the edges to um, really emphasize that this is like the dark side or the shady side of this bloom it's just the point is there's not really I didn't work with a light source or anything like that I just need contrast and I need something that um, makes it feel more uh, three-dimensional as opposed to flat which is the paper our paper is flat nothing we can do about that in watercolors in other mediums, you can add texture to your paper. You can add, you know, modeling paste, that sort of thing. I just, I used to love it and I just don't anymore. So now I'm just playing with what's going on in my palette. And there's just like interesting stuff going on. So there's this really interesting, like almost like a muted orange that I have here. This color, it's quite interesting. So maybe I'll just add it like this. If I'm not sure where to add it, I don't want to go too heavy. I still want to have this kind of light, effortless feel. But I do feel we could pump up just a little bit is the quinacridone gold, just a touch. Okay. 
okay. And I really like sometimes to sprinkle something like a yellow, like quinacridone gold or Nicolaso yellow. Also on the background, I think it just adds like I don't know, like the sun shines through the leaves type of thing. And yeah, I, I just think it adds kind of light to a painting, even if our background is uh, cool in tone and kind of feel more, you know, in the back, in the shade or something like that. What else? Okay, I have to make lunch for my kids. <laughs> but I think that's it. I think I'm feeling good about this. It looks good. And I think I can call this done. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you painted along. Make sure you check the first part of the video um, so you can see how I got to this point. There's also a lot of chatting there. And yeah, let me know if you like these more kind of spontaneous paint along with me videos uh, so I can, you know, try and do them um, somewhat regularly. And I'll see you soon in another video. Bye.